Hey guys, welcome back to Bambi TV, guys. Today we're going to check in our 10 amazing miracles of Prophet Muhammad. Guys, let's get straight into this. Like many other accounts of prophets throughout history, the Prophet Muhammad has been credited with performing amazing miracles as well as experiencing miraculous events personally. In this episode of FTD Facts, I'll be sharing 10 amazing miracles of the Prophet Muhammad. Welcome back guys to another episode, Leroy Kenton here, and this episode is going to contain some miraculous acts attributed to the Prophet Muhammad, as well as miraculous and supernatural experiences that he personally had. All right, with that said, let's jump into it. We're going from 10 all the way down to number one. Number 10 brings us speaking with jinn. In one Islamic narration, a jinn called Hama came in the form of an old man that was holding a staff and he was somebody who actually accepted Islam. And by the way, he was the son of Him, the son of Lakhis, the son of Iblis. He was converted to Islam by the Prophet Noah, and he lived all the way up until the time of Prophet Muhammad. Very unique experience. Number nine brings us becoming invisible. When the Prophet planned to migrate to Medina, the tribes in Mecca, they came up with a plan to get rid of him for good. Each tribe, they sent a representative and they surrounded the house of the Prophet on that night. But Muhammad, he just walked out right in front of them and nobody saw him at all. They were completely blinded to him. Another miraculous event of Prophet Muhammad was the horse in the sand incident. The Prophet Muhammad and Abu Bakr, they were on their way to Medina when they were being followed by an assassin named Suraka. And Abu Bakr, he started to get a little bit worried and a bit fearful, but Muhammad looked at him and said this, don't be sad, Allah is certainly with us. Then from there, he looked towards the assassin, Suraka, and his horse's feet started to get stuck in the sand. And Surika initially was able to free his horse's feet from the sand and from getting stuck. But when he tried to continue to follow the Prophet Muhammad, well, his horse's leg got stuck again and smoke started coming out of the sand. And that's when Surika realized that, yeah, he did not stand a chance. So he had to turn back and go where he came from. The miracle at number seven has to do with water flowing from Muhammad's hands. There was a time when the Prophet Muhammad was with around 300 of his companions and they were in a place called Zara. And the time of the day was about the time for the afternoon prayer, but the people, they couldn't find any water to make wudu or wash themselves. And the Prophet Muhammad, he told them to look for just a little bit of water, just a little bit. And when they found that, then he dipped his hand into it and that's when water started to flow from his hands like a fountain and all 300 people there made wudu so they were able to wash themselves as well as they could use the water for other purposes. Number six brings us healing sick people. In one Islamic narration, one of the prophet's companions was hit with an arrow in the eye. Ouch! Now the arrow was so deep that it went through the back of his head but Muhammad simply placed his hands over his companion's eye and everything was healed, just like that. The miracle halfway in at number five is food increase. So the Prophet Muhammad, he actually fed more than 100 people from very small amounts of food. Whenever he placed his hands on any food, it caused it to increase and everyone could eat till their stomachs were filled, as well as their foods left over. And in one narration, he fed more than 100 men from a cup of milk. Each person was able to drink milk, until they were filled and actually they didn't have to refill the cup at all. Each of the men, they drank to their satisfaction and the cup still was filled with milk as if nobody drank from it. So imagine seeing that, <laughs> mind blowing. Now this is a big event coming in at number four, the Isra and Miraj. This was very miraculous. Known in English as the Night of Journey and Ascension, this is reported to be one of the most amazing miracles of the Prophet. It's called Al-Isra wal Miraj in Arabic. And this was a night where the Prophet Muhammad, under the guidance of the Archangel Jibril, traveled to Kaaba in Mecca to Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem, and then up into the heavens. 
And on this journey, it was pretty phenomenal. He met some prophets of old. He met prophets like Musa or Moses, Isa, also known as Jesus, and Ibrahim, also known as Abraham. He led them in prayer and he reached a very high place where he could even hear the pens that were writing people's good deeds or bad deeds. He also was able to see heaven and hell and he was elevated into the presence of God. But he, of course, was not able to see God's face at all. The miracle at number three is the Prophet Muhammad communicating with objects. There's been reports of several occasions where trees and stones and mountains and even the sand would actually acknowledge the Prophet when he passed by. But there was one incident where one Jewish woman, she was roasting a goat and it was filled with a very strong poison. So she sent it to the Prophet Muhammad and the people with him to eat it. But before the prophet ate, the goat spoke to him, the roasted goat, yeah, spoke to him and told him that there's poison here, so don't be eaten. So prophet Muhammad was able to avoid eating the poisonous food as well as warn the people with him to not eat. Miracle number two is splitting the moon. So the polytheists at the time of the prophet, they kept insisting that they wanted to see a miracle. They wanted to see a sign. And they said that they will believe if the prophet could actually show them the splitting of the moon in half. So when Allah granted the prophet Muhammad this ability, he called them all to one place to witness this. And that's what he did. He split the moon in two, but in their arrogance, they still rejected him and his message. Now the miracle at number one, some of you probably guessed it, but it's simply the miracle of the Quran. There's a claim in the Quran itself that no one can actually imitate the Quran because it's perfect and its quality is above any other. It's a very superior book, a very superior recitation. It was revealed fully in Arabic, Prophet Muhammad's mother tongue, and it's believed by Muslims to have all the answers of life and all the instructions and directions to live a life on the right path that leads to heaven. Muslims also believe that the Quran is the verbatim word of God, and this is why it's set apart from any other book on the planet and even throughout history. So this is why the Quran comes in at number one in this episode. So that's it for me in this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, leave your thoughts and comments down below. And also want to take this time to shout out our members here on FTD Facts. You guys help us with your monthly contributions. You help us to produce videos like this. We can continue to produce more. Guys, this is actually amazing, guys. Like, I, I kind of know, okay, number one was actually anticipated. And I have actually read about Prophet Muhammad going to, not read, I've actually watched a video about Prophet Muhammad going to heaven. But he, I was waiting for him to say if it was a physical evidence or he did it in his sleep. Or I, I don't know. But I wanted him to say it. But I've actually asked this question on my channel, but I didn't get an answer. So the other one that actually shocked me was water coming out from his hand, guys. Like, like these are things that I don't think the public know. Guys, these are things that only when you do your research you know. Like it, I don't feel the current and. Muslims actually preached around the world. I, I know it's preached around the world, but it's not actually like, you know, there's something in the Bible that he says that before God will come, his message must have reached every, everyone, everyone, different ethnic groups, different like cultures in their own language. That is why I think, okay, that is why I feel think the Quran should be translated in different language with the original text also there so it can reach everyone. But guys, what do I know? I don't you to like, share, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time guys. Peace.